Hey, my name is Johan, and I work here at Noodle. This is the second video in which we will introduce you to Noodle and build an application from scratch. We're building a fully functional to-do list web app in about an hour's time total, so please follow along in Noodle and build your own version as we go. In this video, we'll build out the create account and login pages and hook it up to a cloud backend. You'll see how easy and quick it is to work against a real database in Noodle compared to other tools. Remember, you can always pause the video and jump back or skip forward to a different chapter if you need to. I'm going to start by selecting my login page component. It's just a simple group right now, but let's add a page header to it. You can create a new node by clicking anywhere in the node canvas to bring up the node selector. Then you can find your node by either typing or just scrolling in the list, and when you find it, click it or hit enter after you've typed in the correct one. Now you can drag the new node into the node tree, and the white line indicates where it will be placed. I'm adding a black background to the group, and I'm going to change its height so it doesn't take up 100% of its parent's height. We'll use a text node for the logo. I'm changing properties like font size, actual font, and size and alignment properties. Next, I'm adding another text node. This will contain the page title, so I'm styling it a bit different from the logo, and since it's the login page, I'll set the text to login. I want to align this text to the bottom of the header, so I set the dimensions to explicit width and height and set them to 100%. Now I can align the text to the bottom of the text node. Make sure to use the text alignment property and not just the alignment property like I just did here. I'm happy with how the header looks now and I know I want to reuse it. So let's make it into a component. First though, I want to do a little bit of organizing. I'm going to add a folder here that I'll call Pages, and I'll add all of my page components into this folder. Next, I'm going to add another folder, and I'll name it UI Components. Here, I'll add a new visual component and call it Login and Sign Up Header. I'm going to go back to the login page and select the nodes that makes up my header by clicking and dragging and then using Ctrl C to copy them. Let's switch to the login and sign up header component again and I'm just going to paste the nodes I just cut out. Perfect. Now let's use this component in the login page. First I'm going to delete these nodes. Then either drag it into the node canvas or right click on the node canvas to bring up the node selector and start typing sign up and login header to find your newly created component. Now I want to be able to set a new title for this header depending on what page it's on. So let's add a component input to the login and sign up header node. If we select the component inputs node, we can click the plus port button to create a new output port on this node. Let's call it title. And then I want to connect this component input node to the text node that I have. 
You can do that by hovering the mouse cursor over the node that you want to make a connection from. When the cursor changes to the plus and the node gets a white highlight and the little connection dot lights up, you can click and drag your mouse. Now you have a connection arrow and if you drop it over a node, that will become your target node. So let's drop it over the text node here and we get a nice connections panel on the left. On the very left, you can see the output connections from the component inputs, and on the right side, you see the input connections on the text node. Let's select the title output we created and connect it to the text input of the text node. Thanks to the component inputs, we can now change the title of our login and sign up header node. In the previous video, we imported the simple design system module, or SDS for short. Let's use that to continue building out the login page. First, I'm going to add a group that I'm going to use to lay out the input fields that I'm going to be adding next. I want one input field for a username and one for a password. If I select a component and use Ctrl C and then Ctrl V, I get a copy of that node. So I'm doing that for my second input field. I'm going to select each input field in turn and edit some of its properties. You'll notice that I'm actually using the parent node to control the width of my input fields. To control the width, I actually used the margin and padding gadget on the parent group to set some padding. And you'll see that this is a very commonly used gadget on the properties panel. I'm also changing the labels for the input fields. As you can see, you can set an input field to be several different things, and one of them is password, so that's perfect for us here. Groups are a great way to organize and lay out your visual components, so I've added one more that will contain a nice button. Our simple design system comes with several different buttons and I encourage you to explore their differences. We'll use this button to log in once the input fields are filled in in the final app. Let's make sure that the button label says login. And lastly, let's add a text node here that we'll use as a link to the sign up page. As you can see, I'm doing some margin and layout changes as we go. And now that I'm looking at my application, I'm actually not too happy with what the default fonts and color schemes are for the buttons and the input fields. These components come from SDS, or the Simple Design System, and the Simple Design System is actually using Noodle's global style features that you can find over here. If we change the fonts and colors here, it will affect all the components in SDS and in the whole project that are referencing these particular styles. And that's exactly what I want. So let's make a few changes here to get the color scheme and font styles that I'm looking for. Follow along and make the same changes or experiment and come up with your own styles. The simple design system is using blue as default color for buttons and components. I want to change that so it's more in line with the black and white color scheme our designer has created for the to-do app. So that's what I'm doing here. Here's a case where I just want this group to be the combined height of its children. 
So I'm changing the dimensions and then adding some bottom margin to get it placed where I want. If you remember from the first video, we've already set up a navigation stack in the app component. That's great, because that means that if we add a navigation node here in the login page, we can set it up to navigate to the sign-up page when clicking the text at the bottom here. I need to tell the navigate node which component to navigate to, so that's what I'm doing here. I just quickly jump back to the app component to show you how we set up the navigation stack in the previous video. To test that the navigation works, we have to bring up the preview window by clicking this play button. Now we can actually navigate between the pages. The component canvas only shows the visuals and interactions that happen in one component. It doesn't show you the interactions and logic between components. So for that, we use the preview window. Let's copy the login page and make a few changes to it so that it becomes our signup page. Notice how easy it is to copy nodes from one component into another, and how quickly you can make changes to get a completely new component. Instead of using the navigation node here, let's use the navigate back node. The navigate back node simply tells the navigation stack to show the previous page, which in our case was the login page. I'm using the preview window again to navigate between the pages and it's working great. Okay, now that we have some nice signup and login pages, let's enable cloud services for our project so that we can start creating real users and logging into our app. Click the cloud services button and click enable. Now let's create a new backend by giving it the name and the description. Noodle always creates a default backend for you, but we've created a new one here, so let's make sure we select that one as our project backend. Click the dashboard button to show the management interface for the cloud services. As you can see, a users class or a table is automatically created for us, but it's currently empty. We can of course add more data fields to the columns to this class, but in this project, we're happy with the defaults. Now, let's use some of the nodes from the user management module that we imported in the first video. Let's go to the signup page and add a signup node. Let's connect the username field and the password field to this node. And then we'll connect the button's click signal to the signup node's signup signal. We are using the Noodle hosted cloud services, but you can of course use your own custom cloud services and hosting as well. The signup and login nodes support a lot of error handling out of the box. But in this project, we're gonna skip error handling for simplicity's sake. Let's connect the success signal to the navigate node so that we can log in once we've created a user. All right, let's test it by creating a new user. Oops, that's the login page. Let's go to the sign up page first. As you can see, it navigated to the login page, so that's great. Now let's go back to the backend using the dashboard and look in the users table. We can now see that we have one user here. Back in the login page, let's add a login node and hook that up appropriately. Follow along and feel free to pause as needed.
If it's successful, we want to navigate to the main page, so let's add another navigate node and do that. That worked really well. Okay, so our main page needs some work, and we'll get to that in the next video. But for now, let's add a user node that also comes from the user management module. From this node, we can get information about the currently logged in user, so for example, we can display the username right here. And there you have it. In about 15 minutes, we built a fully functioning sign up and login flow for our app. Pretty cool. In the next video, we'll build all the visual components for the to-do list page. Thanks for watching and please join us on our Discord server and share your noodle journey with our growing community.